What's going on, everybody? So today is the first R package review I'm going to be doing on this channel. And hopefully this is one of many to come in the future. And so today we're gonna start off with Magritte R, or the package that gave R the pipe. So the pipe is basically the Unix pipe in a way. It takes stuff on the left-hand side, left-hand side, and puts it into the function on the right-hand side. So how this works in R is if you have a data frame, uh, you have some value and you have a data frame and you wanna take that data frame and put that into a function, you can do that with the pipe. Pipe says take the data frame, put it into the function. And it puts it into the function as the first argument of the function. So these functions that all start with the first argument being um, the data that a function is gonna be operating on, are compatible with the pipe. Now, anything that doesn't have that, I think that that causes an issue, but correct me if I'm wrong. Now, with the pipe, you can say data frame into a function, and then you know the function works, and if a data frame is returned from that function, and it just performs a, something on that, that data frame, then if you pipe the result of that function, to another function, you're basically just passing your data frame along in through various stages of processing. And in the tidyverse, using dplyr to filter out criteria um, or to select things, aggregate, mutate, etc. This is incredibly useful, and I really like that workflow. I like taking you know my data frame and then shoving it through multiple dplyr functions to filter it, aggregate, group, or mutate, etc. And at the end, I have a, another data frame. Now, this doesn't just work with just the tidyverse. Now, you can take other things and do other operations with it. So in this package review series, I'll actually be going through various examples of some of the more um, commonly used functions in these packages. And with Magritte, it's going to be, Magritte R, uh, it's gonna be the four pipes that are offered. That's all I'm gonna cover from this package. So the library is just Magritte R. Now uh, with the tidyverse, a lot of the tidyverse packages automatically import the actual pipe function by standard. So you don't, you rarely need to straight up load the package, but I have encountered situations multiple in which I actually have needed to uh, import the uh, library for the pipe, but excuse me, but uh, let's get into it. So the normal pipe, is just the percent sign less than, or uh, sorry, greater than, and then another percent sign. That's a pain to type, which is why there is a shortcut in our studio. Um, I have the Vim settings, so I'm gonna enter insert mode. So if you're just typing in our studio, you can do control shift M. So control shift M, and that will in insert a pipe character. So if I do control shift M, that will insert a pipe. Really useful if you're just typing in your function, so you got your data, control shift M, next function, control shift M, next function. You don't need to like break your stride when, during your analysis to use this, this uh, function, use the pipe. So in this case, my first example here is just a vector of numerical values, just a vector of numbers. And I'm taking this vector and piping it into the mean function, which is basically just saying, take this and put it into this function. Return the mean of this vector. So when I run that, now the cool thing about the pipe is that if you have a bunch of pipe connected operations, on any of those lines, if you do control enter, it'll run the entire pipe operation. So I don't need to select it all. Um, I don't need to run the whole chunk either. I could just say, you know, here or here or wherever, just control enter and it'll run and I get my mean of th those values. So then I could also just, you know, just to show you how uh, that's working, um, mean, put the ve vector in there, same result. It's basically just doing what I typed right here, but it looks cleaner. You take this vector, you pipe it into the function and it's just like the Unix pipe in that respect. I accept that this one, you can actually have line breaks. So right here, you could just say like, this is basically in, if this was like, you know, bash or something, you know, pipe it into that. That's pretty much what's going on. Now, um, 
you don't have to do just standard input and output because this is R. Uh, you can take whole data structures, you can do vectors, you can do data frames, tr uh, tibbles, tribbles, whatever. And you can do the same sort of operation. You can shove the value or function result into another function. And with passing data frames or data.tables, um, you can get a lot of like functionality out of this. And I use this on the daily. Using the pipe character is like critical to my typical workflow nowadays. So what happens if we also have an assignment? So I have the result of that mean formula going into X right here. But how do I deal with this? Like I, I'm X is, is being assigned the value of this vector, but that vector is being piped into the mean function. How do you understand this? Now at first glance, this might look weird, but well, the way you can read this and understand it is by uh, reading it this way. X is receiving the value of the vector after having gone through the mean function. So the mean of the vector is being assigned to X. And that's basically how I read these functions. Um, you could get rid of this entirely and you're just getting you know, the result of the mean function, which is that you know, four, one repeating, and that equals this result. And so that result is what's being assigned to X. So, and I put the, the verbiage right there for you too, so you can read it that way as well. And so when you do that and you run the result of this, you know, the value of X is the same thing. It's just assigning that end value to X. This will work with a data frame. It'll work with a single summary statistic, uh, etc. Now, if I uh, just run just this portion, I don't run the concat formula and I just run that, I don't get any output because the output is being assigned to the X value, which you can see up here in my environment. So it gets assigned to the environmental variable X which is why if I selected this, it'll actually print it out on what it is, which is four, one repeating. So if you would do an assignment this way, you won't receive console output, except when you do the next pipe. Actually, I think that's actually one of the other pipes later. Anyways, I digress. So that is just the normal pipe. This one is the one with the um, uh, control shift, M hotkey, and that is the most typically used one. Now there are other pipes and other with other functionality, but that is the most typically used pipe character, piping something forward into the next operation or function. And I use that endlessly. Now the next pipe is the compound pipe. This one starts with um, percent, less than, greater than, percent again. Um, you can see all these up here as well. Now, this, a normal pipe will push something forward into the process. The compound pipe pushes something forward into the process, but then also assigns that back to its initial value. So right here, you can see that uh, I'm assigning this vector, the same numerical vector, to y. So I'm going to do that. So now in our environment, you can see that we have a numerical vector uh, assigned to y. Now, if I use the compound pi uh, pipe and I say y, that is equal to this vector is being piped into the mean function, but then the result of that function is being piped back into y, and then I will be y will be reassigned the value of the result of the mean function on that vector, which is a real big mouthful for really just the operation occurring is um, you know y is assigned that uh, vector. Can't type today y is assigned uh, mean of y. This is really what's occurring with using the compound pipe above this. That's, that's basically what it is. So let's run that and watch the environment up here. So you can see that right now it's the vector, but when I run the compound pipe, it receives the result of its operations. So it's saying, hey, take the value, shove it forward, operate, and take the result and put it back into y and reassign y to that result. So when we see the result, it is in fact the result of the mean operation. And that's the compound pipe. Now, honestly, uh, I wouldn't really use this because I don't like overriding my variables like this. Now, when you pipe something forward, it's basically like read only mode on the actual variable itself. Like if I had the vector still assigned to y and I only pipe this forward into the mean, um, if I did the result of the mean function 
and you know, I'd get 4.1 repeating, but the value of y is still that vector. So it's like, hey, I'm gonna borrow a copy of this and then operate on it, but the original variable retains its initial value. So I don't like overwriting my variables this way. So I probably would not ever really uh, use this. I've never used it to date so far, but you know, the functionality of this exists if you want to. I mean, at some point, you know, are you gonna really abstract your code so much that it's harder to understand? Or is legibility and readability more important at that level? I mean, and this type of operation, you might just wanna err on the side of a legibility. But I digress. Um, the next pipe is the exposition pipe. Now, I didn't learn about this until I was making this outline for this video. This is actually a really cool one and useful. Um, I haven't used it yet, but uh, not professionally. I haven't used it yet professionally, but I do think it, this is actually really useful. So if I'm going to have a triple, now ignore all the verbiage here. I'm basically just tr doing a one-off set of tabular data with two columns, four rows. That's how you can think about this. So if I take this triple, which is just two columns of name and age for, you know, I have a character vector and I have a numerical or double vector, whatever, a numerical vector and a, a character vector. If I just pipe this whole triple into the mean function and say, hey, I want to do the mean of age because I obviously can't do the mean over a character vector. Uh, if I try to run this, uh-oh, something broke and doesn't work. So at this point, it's assuming I'm trying to do mean over both columns because it doesn't even recognize age. It doesn't even know what age is because age is over here in the triple. The mean function doesn't know what age is because we're piping this forward. And I don't really know a better way of explaining that other than with this example is that um, the exposition pipe will expose the names of these columns or these variables to the function it is being piped into. So it's saying, hey, I'm gonna be sending you some data. Here are the column headers so that you know in advance of the operation to occur. So in this case, it's saying, you know, here's the triple, it exists now, and we're sending it the names. So now it recognizes, oh, age exists. Okay, we're gonna be operating on age only. And then the data arrives. Okay, we're operating on age only. And so when I run this operation, it does return the mean age. So this would be a way of uh, recognizing the variable names of a data structure entering a function before that uh, data structure gets there. It would necessarily, it, it would save a step. Like what I'm envisioning is that this would save a step on a dplyr filter, where I just take this triple or data frame and select a variable with dplyr select, and then pipe that into the mean function. It saves that step. It's just, hey, just, here's the columns, age only, please do the mean of that. And this, there's your answer. There's what, that's what you wanted to know. And that would just get that out of the way. Um, so it could save a step and it's a uh, percent dollar signs and percent. And that's the, the third pipe. Now the final and last pipe is the T pipe. Now I thought this was really interesting and I was wondering what is a use case for this until I saw the actual like listed standard use case, which is like sending a, a data frame or something to a plot. Now, if you have like a two vector data frame or two column, two variable data frame of, I don't know, two continuous variables and you pipe that into geom point or something, a ggplot, you could have a scatter plot just produced, but you also want console output. So the T pipe works in this way. And I drew like a little bit of a ASCII art graphic for you. You take your value, this could be your vector, your data frame, whatever your value is, and you're gonna pipe this forward into a function, and the function is going to do something. Now, if it's just like the mean function, now it's not going to actually output anything. So the function will just operate, and it will also send the same value down the T to be returned in the console. So if I did a vector, it would be returning the vector into the console and then the function will operate on that vector. So a good example of this is the two functions I have below here. So when I pipe the, when I use the T pipe to take the vector and put it into mean, I should see 4.1 repeating, right? Well, when I run that, I don't. The only thing returned is the vector. The mean function did operate. A mean was calculated, but it's not returned into the console 
because of the t-pipe. But when we pipe this vector, the same vector, into the plot function, it will not only output the vector itself into the console, it will actually shove the same vector into the plot function and plot it. So let's do that. And we can see that not only do we have console output, but we also have a plot. Now the plot was produced by using the index or the places, you know, the first character, first uh, value, first second value, third value, and the actual value itself, so which is what it's saying index there. But I digress. You have a plot and you have the vector console output. So that's the t-pipe when you want to have something uh, operated on by a function but don't want console output, but you also want to output the original uh, value that was being operated upon. So those are the four pipes. You have the normal, you have the compound, the exposition, and the t-pipe. And that, yeah, these are very, very useful. I use the normal pipe every day, all day, for my operations, especially dplyr functions. I really enjoy that workflow. So that is from the Magritte R package, and that's the pipe. Have fun with that. Bye.